Hello, I'm Atu Jibir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now news and details. Sri Lankan President Kodabaya Raja Baksha has announced he will step down after protesters stormed his official residence and set the Prime Minister's house on fire. Neither the PM nor the President were in the buildings at the time. Hundreds of thousands of descendants on the capital Colombo calling for Raja Baksha to resign after months of protests over economic mismanagement. Raja Baksha will step down on 13 July. Prime Minister Rikami Singh has agreed to resign yesterday. The Speaker of Parliament said the President decided to step down to ensure a peaceful handover of power and called on the public to respect the law. The announcement triggered an eruption of celebratory fireworks in the city. Political leaders are due to hold further meetings to discuss a smooth transition of power. Sri Lanka's military has appealed to people to cooperate with security forces to maintain calm. After Saturday's events, the United States appealed to the Sri Lankan leadership to act promptly to resolve the country's economic crisis. Protesters who stormed President Kodabaya Raja Baksha's house on Saturday claimed to have recovered a large sum of money from the mansion, local media reported. According to the local media, it was reported that the recovered money was handed over to the security units. Several dramatic videos have been doing the rounds on social media after Saturday's upheaval where thousands of protesters stormed his official residence in the capital of Colombo, forcing him to flee to an unknown location. With the demand for President Kotabaya Rajabakcha's resignation, they stormed into the President's house, tore down security cordons placed by police, took a dip in the swimming pool and romped through his kitchen and home. In one of the videos on social media, protesters were seen counting the currency notes that they claimed were unearthed from the President's official residence, said the media outlet. Sri Lankan authorities said that the situation can only be understood once they probe it and come up with relevant facts. Chief of Defence Staff General Shivendra Silva urged all citizens to give their support to the armed forces and the police in order to maintain peace in the country, as per the media portal. He made these remarks in a special statement accompanied by Tri-Force commanders.
A mass shooting at a tavern in Johannesburg, Soweto Township has killed 14 people and left three others in a critical condition, according to the police. Police say they are investigating reports that a group of men arrived in a minibus taxi and opened fire on some of the patrons at the bar late Saturday night. Police were on Sunday morning removing bodies of the deceased and investigating what had led to the mass shooting. The three critically injured and one other person wounded have been taken to Chris Hani Bargwanath Hospital. The number of cartridges found on the scene indicated it was a group of people who shot at the pattern, said Gondeng Province Police Commissioner Lieutenant General Elias Mawella. The primary investigation suggests that these people were enjoying themselves here in a licensed tavern operating within the right hours, Mawella told the Associated Press. The Southern Angami Youth Organization and Southern Angami Students Union organized Southern Angami Zuku Expedition Day at Zuku Valley, July 9. Speaking at the function, advisor for Technical Education and Electro Elections, Medo Yoka, MLA 14 Southern Angami I said that weaving Zuko Valley through the lens of its landscape alone was not enough today and pointed out that there were many important and relevant issues that need in-depth retrospection. Dwelling on the history and stories of the past alone should not be conclusion of the day. He said, adding that the greatest challenge and mission that lies ahead of us was to draw a road map of how the Southern Angamis will sustain the value of Zuku. He challenged and called to ponder deep on how to patent the rights and ownership of Zuku Valley. Advisor Youth and Sports Resorts, Engineer Zale Nika, MLA 15 Southern Angami AC2, said that a program of such kind boosts the relation of all the Southern Angami villages. Such venture, he maintained, should not just confine in the region but encourage other tribes and groups to also undertake such missions. Observing that flora in the valley was decreasing, the advisor suggested to revive age-old techniques of explore other means so that flora species can be revived to its former state and add in prompting tourism. Short speeches were delivered by President SAPO Kevi Bote, Sopier Sayo President Metekrelie Majura, Forest Ranger Kenekrul Noswe. At least eight people have lost their lives to the Japanese encephalitis in Assam in the last nine days, while 82 people have been infected so far, the state health department stated on Sunday. The health department has asked authorities to set up district rapid response teams to keep a close watch on the situation. Japanese encephalitis and malaria kill may many people in Assam every year, especially specifically during the monsoon season that usually starts in May and stretches to October. According to the National Health Mission, since July 1st, at least 8 people have died and 82 people have fallen ill after being infected by the vector-borne disease. The NHM had also issued a standard operating procedure and guidelines to tackle the situation arising with the outbreak of the Japanese encephalitis. Last year, at least 40 deaths were reported due to Japanese encephalitis. A official said. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday said blessings of Goddess Kali are always with the country, which is moving ahead with spiritual energy for the welfare of the world. Virtually addressing the centenary celebrations of Swami Adma Sadananda, organized by Ramakrishna Mission, here the Prime Minister said Swami Ramakrishna Paramahansa had a vision of Goddess Kali and believed that everything was pervaded by her consciousness. एक ऐसे संत थे जिन्होंने मां काली का स्पष्ट साक्षात्कार किया था जिन्होंने मां काली के चरणों में अपना सर्वस्व समर्पित कर दिया था वो कहते थे ये संपूर्ण जगत ये चराचर सब कुछ 
मां की चेतना से व्याप्त है यही चेतना बंगाल की काली पूजा में दिखती है यही चेतना बंगाल और पूरे भारत की आस्था में दिखती है इसी चेतना और शक्ति के एक पुंज को स्वामी विवेकानंद जैसे युग पुरुषों के रूप में स्वामी रामकृष्ण परमस ने प्रदीप्त किया था स्वामी विवेकानंद को मां काली की जो अनुभूति हुई उनके जो आध्यात्मिक दर्शन हुए उसने उनके भीतर असाधारण ऊर्जा और सामर्थ्य का संचार किया SMG Minister Manta Biswa Sarma on Saturday pulled up the superintendent of police and apologized to the family of young businessman and animal activist Vinit Magaria who allegedly died by suicide following threats from a mafia in the broker. In a video posted by news agency ANI, Sarma can be seen reprimanding the police officer in front of Magaria's family after visiting their home. हमारा सरकार इतना उम्मीद हो गया कि बोलिंगला खान भी यहाँ पर बैठे सर आपको रिकॉर्डिंग भेजा मैं अपना सर्विंदा हूँ मतलब उससे ज्यादा मैं सर्विंदा हो ही नहीं सकता उसके होते होते यहाँ काल बोलिंगला खान भी यहाँ पर बैठे हैं लोग का क्या है सर आप हमारा रिकॉर्डिंग सुन रहे हैं मतलब जिंदगी में अपना सर्विंदा नहीं अगर डिब्रूगढ़ में अभी भी बोल दूं लाख कम साल रहा है और सांस लेता लोगों को लाके ऐसा कर सकते हैं तो हम लोग क्या क्यों बैठा है आप लोग का क्या अधिकार है तब करने का तो सोचिए नहीं सकते तो असम में आज का दिन लोग भूरी भूरा बांपा में भी ये करने का काम Elon Musk pulled out of the famous $44 billion Twitter deal, citing that the microblogging platform had failed to provide him with proper information on the fake accounts on its site. In return, the website has taken shots back at the Tesla man by suspending his Twitter account. Or that is what a cheeky yet misleading viral tweet during the rounds of the Bluebird app suggests, let's have a look at the position of Twitter right now. Elon Musk has said that he wanted to terminate the deal as Twitter was in material breach of their agreement and had made false and misleading statements during negotiations. In a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, Musk's legal team said that for nearly two months, Musk has sought the data and information necessary to make an independent assessment of the prevalence of fake or spam accounts on Twitter's platform, but Twitter has failed or refused to provide this information. Twitter has ignored Mars's requests. Sometimes it has rejected them for reasons that appear to be unjustified and sometimes it has claimed to comply with while giving Mars incomplete or unusable information. Musk also said he was pulling out because Twitter fired senior executives on a third of its talent acquisition team, breaching Twitter's obligation to preserve substantially intact the material components of its current business organization. There were also question marks around how Musk would finance the $44 billion deal. In May, Musk had told the U.S. SEC that deal would include $33.5 billion in equity, up from an earlier commitment of $27.25 billion. He had also sold Tesla stock worth around $8.5 billion and had lined up about $7 billion from investors, including Prince Al Walid bin Talal of Saudi Arabia. However, he had told the SEC that he was continuing to seek additional financing and was in talks with Twitter shareholders, including former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, about potentially retaining their stakes in the company. It is unclear if Mars has managed to raise enough money to finance the deal. The social media company, meanwhile, has said it plans to pursue legal action to enforce the agreement. Mars's action to bail out of the deal marks the latest twist in the long-running saga after he decided to buy Twitter in April. 
Musk and Twitter would be looking at a lengthy legal battle. As the social media platform has made it clear that it will pursue legal action to enforce the terms of the deal. The Twitter board is is committed to closing the transaction on the price and terms agreed upon with Musk and plans to pursue legal action to enforce the merger agreement. The lead boy, one of just six worldwide to earn Rs 2.5 crore scholarship to study in U.S., is daily wage worker's son. Presently a class 12 student at Soshid Samadhan Kendra, Patna's Prem Kumar will be moving later this year to Pennsylvania, USA to pursue mechanical engineering and international relations at Lafayette College. The Rs 2.5 crore scholarship is a full ride and will cover every expense related to his undergraduate program. Prem Kumar, son of a daily wage earner from the Konpura village in Bulwari Sharif, is a first-generation college student to be in his family and, as per media reports, likely the first Mahadalit student to accomplish the feat. It is understood that the Rs 2.5 crore scholarship is a full right offered by Lafayette College, a leading engineering school in the U.S. established in 1826. Prem is one of only six students selected for the prestigious Dyer Fellowship worldwide. The Dyer Fellowship is awarded to extraordinary students who exhibit drive and intrinsic motivation to impact the world, along with a relentless focus on problem solving, according to university officials. Sir, I have to say that I have been in the American Vishwavidal and I have been in the selection of this. I have been in the 2.5 crore in the Chattavati and I have been in the Chattavati. मतलब मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग पढ़ने के लिए मैं वहाँ अगस्त में जाने वाला हूँ चार साल का कोर्स है और ये सब मुझे एक संस्था है डिक्सटरी ग्लोबल जिसके मैं संपर्क में आया और उनके ही संपर्क में होने के कारण मैंने कई नेशनल और इंटरनेशनल अचीवमेंट किया और कॉलेज कहाँ से अपने पढ़ाई शुरू किया मैंने अपनी पढ़ाई यू के जी किया है छोटे में जब मैं छोटा बच्चा था तब से ही कहाँ से मैंने शोषित समाधान केंद्र स्कूल नामक है जो एन है और वहीं से मैंने अपनी जो भी प्राइमरी स्कूल की जो भी शिक्षा थी मैंने वहीं से पूर्ण की है कैसा लग रहा है आपको अमेरिका में जाके पढ़िएगा आप सर मुझे तो काफी खुशी महसूस हो रही है इसलिए नहीं कि मैं अमेरिका में हुआ बस कि इसलिए कि मैं बहुत पिछड़ी हुई जाति का हूँ और इसी मतलब हमारे ऐसी जाति में ऐसा होना एक मतलब की अविश्वसनीय है क्योंकि आज तक हमारे समाज में अभी तक हुआ नहीं है और इस तरह की उपलब्धि हमारे समाज में अभी तक किसी ने किया भी नहीं है प्रेरणा स्रोत तो इससे बहुत सारे व्यक्ति हैं लेकिन मैं बचपन से काफ़ी मेहनती था और मैं पढ़ने में रुचि भी रखता था तो मुझे पढ़ने का मतलब रुचि और ये अच्छे करने का उपलब्धि मैंने मतलब हमारे देश के जितने भी जो ग्रेट आदमी ग्रेटेस्ट पीपल हैं जैसे ए पी जब्दुल कलाम और जैसे वर्गीज कुरियन ये सब हमारे देश के ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्होंने हमारे मध्य देश में कुछ ऐसे योगदान दिए हैं जिसके बिना हमारा मतलब कि हमारे जीवन यापन या इसलिए रहना में काफी काफी कठिन होता तो ऐसे ही अपनी वो शिक्षा के माध्यम से हमारे देश में मध्य देश में उन्होंने काफी महत्व मतलब की महत्वपूर्ण योगदान दिया है सर मैं अपने जीवन में तो मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग करना चाहता हूँ और मैं चाहता हूँ कि अपने शिक्षा की क्षेत्र में भी अपने समाज के लिए अपने समाज के बच्चों के लिए मैं उसे मतलब की कुछ काम करना चाहता हूँ क्या नाम हुआ आपका बताइए अच्छा क्या करते हैं आप आए खेती बाजारी में यह सब काम कर रहे हैं आपको मालूम है कि आपका बेटा कितना पढ़ गया है हाँ। मालूम तो ना है कि कितना पढ़ गया था पढ़ल लिखल है अब जा रहा है अमेरिका या का कहाँ जा रहा है अमेरिका अब जाएगा कहाँ के लिए जा रहा है जा रहा है पढ़े के लिए क्या बनेगा वहाँ क्या बनेगा अब इतना तो कहा बनेगा सब हम जानेंगे 
Former Indian skipper Virat Kohli has once again been trolled after he scored just one run in the recent second T20 India vs England in Edbaston. The thing is are getting bad to worse for former Indian skipper Virat Kohli in the second T20. Kohli was dismissed by debutant Richard Gleeson who got rid of captain Rohit Sharma and Kohli inside three balls. The 33-year-old could only score one run, after which he tried to pull a short length delivery from Gleason, but got his timing all wrong as the ball went high up in the air. Team India is going through a transitional phase after an underwhelming 2021 T20 World Cup campaign and a lot of pressure has been put on Virat Kohli who is going through a rough patch. Kohli has been arguably India's best batter and biggest match winner in the last decade but in the last nine months things have changed a lot. The 30 year old has been under the scanner constantly after he relinquished the T20 captaincy which made BCCI sack him from the ODI captain's post too. Meanwhile, after the second T20 match, netizens have taken to social media to express their displeasure and unsatisfactory performance of the former Indian captain Virat Kohli. Some said Kohli should be dropped. Others wondered whether the former Indian skipper was finished. That's all we have for now. Keep watching on Will TV.